Is Sean O'Malley a fake star? Is he a fabricated superstar by the UFC? Stick around to hear my thoughts. I'm Wyatt, and this is Fight Society. All right, guys. So the UFC 299 press conference was yesterday, and the fights are tomorrow. And one thing that I wanted to point out from the press conference was how Sean O'Malley got booed. Cheeto got the Cheeto chance. Sean O'Malley, every line that he said was not hitting. It really wasn't. And I've been seeing a lot recently in the last few days in comment sections on Twitter saying that he's trying too hard, that he's corny, all of these different things. And when you pair that with what Aljamain Sterling says was a pay-per-view flop at UFC 292. Now, I've, I said in a previous video that it is not the challenger's fault necessarily for a non-pay-per-view selling champ to not get that many pay-per-view points. I think that Aljamain Sterling should have been more likable, more sellable, more of a draw, done more to be a draw in his style, in his actions and interviews and content outside of the cage before he was comp before he can complain about anybody else being the reason that he didn't get pay-per-view points or enough pay-per-view points. But with that said, he did say that it flopped. And when you take into account his Sean O'Malley's interviews do not do great. I mean, MMA guru videos get more views than Sean O'Malley interviews and Sean Strickland's numbers absolutely drown Sean O'Malley's numbers when it comes to content, interviews, podcasts, all of that, engagement for the UFC, everything. Now, I know that Sean O'Malley with the hair and the outfits and the fighting style, I mean, he's amazing in the cage. I think that they're, they want him to be the star of the UFC being because he's the more sellable star as opposed to Sean Strickland, who might be more controversial and say more divisive things, talking about women, this, that, the other, whatever. Not really worried about that. I mean, he, he gets, but he gets more attention than Sean O'Malley by far. And it just makes me think that the UFC is going for the mainstream possibility in terms of marketing when it comes to Sean O'Malley, because he doesn't say anything crazy controversial. He said something about um, Marab's nose is as crooked as Biden, which was pretty funny when you have Jack Della Maddalena sitting on the same stage. But when you really think about it, <clears throat> Sean O'Malley is not there yet, at least when it comes to star power. And Sean O'Malley's always been the kind of awkward, soft-spoken, curly hair, tattoos, weed-smoking guy, even going back to Contender Series. So it's confusing to me why the public has turned on him now. I just want to know what you guys think about why Sean O'Malley, while sticking to the same shtick and personality, and I hear me out, I don't think Sean O'Malley is entertaining outside of the cage. I think his fighting style is incredible. The one-punch knockout power, the switching stances, the feints, the spinning back kicks, the kicks to the body, those teep kicks that he throws to the body are amazing power in both hands. Don't get me wrong. Sean O'Malley is incredible to watch fight, but he is dry as fuck on the mic. He is just dry. The most entertaining thing about him is his cage is his fighting in the cage. And aside from that, people are drawn to him because of how he looks and the things he does, because, you know, they talk about the open relationship with his wife and the weed smoking and the, um, the hanging out with the Nelk boys, but nothing about his personality is actually entertaining. He's dry as fuck. It is what it is. Not to hate on the guy. He's got more money than me, but he's dry as fuck. And, you know, even though I've made plenty of videos talking shit about Sean Strickland and how much, how sensitive I think he is for being a real man and how he hates on influencers, even though he hangs out with them, and at this point literally is a YouTuber with the things he posts, he is still way more entertaining on the mic, way more clippable moments, funny moments, holy shit moments, and Sean O'Malley just doesn't have that. He's stuck in this weird, like, part of him wants to be Chael Sonnen, like WWE-style shit talk, 
Part of him wants to be like the Zen meditating ice bath type of guy. And then part of him wants to be the, um, like the happy go lucky smoking weed being goofy on the podcast with Tim Welch. So I think that he's just, I don't think he's even figured out his character yet or personality when it comes to himself in the media. So his numbers aren't great. The fans in the comment sections and on Twitter, they seem to not be on his side. Cheeto got a lot of love, even though it was in Miami. I know that's a more of a Latin population there. So Cheeto's going to get more love there. But, and on top of that, they built such an insane card below Sean O'Malley in the main event with Poirier Sandini in the, or Sandini, because I know people were hating on my, the way I pronounce it in the comments, but <clears throat> Poirier BSD, MVP Kevin Holland, Peter Young Song Yadong, JDM Jack Della Maddalena, for fuck's sake, Curtis Blades and Gilton Almeida, a top 10 heavyweight matchup is on the prelims. So they stacked this card as if they have a weak main event where typically, like if you have a real star like Connor, they have Connor in the main event and a pretty BS card the rest of the way down. So it's just one of those things. I mean, it's, they're trying to sell him as a superstar. He's clearly not there yet. And to me, it kind of seems like he's a fabricated superstar. They talk about social media star, Sean O'Malley, blah, blah, blah. But his engagement's not really there. And he's one of my favorite fighters to watch fight. So I'm not trying to hate on him. But I think Dustin Poirier is the star of this card, like the real superstar of the card. I mean, three fights with Connor, pay-per-view main event against Justin Gaethje when it wasn't even a title fight. He, Dustin Poirier, I know two of them were with Connor and one was for the BMF. But he has headlined three pay-per-views that didn't have an actual belt on the line. Two with Connor and then one for the BMF. So to me, Dustin Poirier is the actual star power carrying this pay-per-view, along with great matchups, high-ranked matchups, and the debut of MVP on the card. So let me know what you guys think. Sean O'Malley, star power fabricated or for real. If you like this video and you want more content just like this, click that subscribe button down below. If you want more content from me, go check out my weekly comedy podcast, The Hissy Fit Podcast, and go check out my personal channel, Wyatt's World. Go watch this suggested video and I'll see you next time.